Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World, ladies and gentlemen. Today we continue our journey into the world of shark cryptids. Now, as I stated in my last video, I am by no means a cryptid expert or as well studied as other crypto enthusiasts. The approach I'm taking with these anomalies is how likely or realistic is it for them to exist. Take Megalodon, for example. Megalodon is dead. Looking at this picture of the shark cryptid iceberg provided by our friend Truth is Scarier Than Fiction, let's venture down to the next level and beyond, starting with the giant cookie cutter shark. The story behind this one begins with a colleague of shark specialist Eugene Clark in Alaska. While working, he came across a dead narwhal carcass with round bites in it that resembled the bites of a cookie cutter shark, only much larger. This led to the gentleman speculating that it could be a larger, undiscovered species of cookie cutter shark. This claim, however, got a lot of pushback. Marine biologist Richard Martin believes that this was likely the work of the Pacific sleeper shark, or Greenland shark, as they are also known to feed on the carcasses of marine mammals. We also don't know how the narwhal was killed, nor was I able to find any pictures of the bites, so it's a bit hard to say what it was at this point. Shark toes, despite how inconclusive this story is, do you think there could be a species of giant cookie cutter shark out there? Depends on what you mean by giant. Cookie cutter sharks normally grow to about two feet long, give or take. If by giant you mean, could there be a three to three and a half foot cookie cutter shark? Maybe even a freak of nature four footer? Sure. Anything beyond that, however, is a bit ridiculous. But I think this segues to a point I'd like to add to the conversation of not just shark cryptids, but cryptids in general. I always say that everything is explained through evolution. We all know that all animals occupy some sort of ecological niche and that they didn't come about said niche by accident. With this in mind, let's say for the sake of argument that there was a giant species of cookie cutter shark. What niche would it fill? How would this differ from the OG cookie cutter? And most importantly, what factors influenced the way it evolved? Take these sort of questions and apply them to any cryptid, and I believe it may at least help answer a thing or two about it. Of course, this depends on how much information there is on a particular cryptid and how accurate said information is. But you get the point. For the giant cookie cutter shark, we don't have a lot of information on this cryptid. And personally, from an evolutionary standpoint, I don't see a reason for cookie cutters to evolve bigger than they already are. They already feed on the biggest animals in the world. One stopped a submarine. Huh? No, I'm serious, look it up. They even take bites out of orcas. Nothing fucks with orcas. Yet this little two foot black air force takes one look at them and says, I'll take a piece of that. But they do all of this at the size they are. What ecological reason would they have to grow larger? I'm not saying there isn't a larger species of cookie cutter shark out there. And I'd say it's plausible that there is I just don't know what its ecological niche would be. But enough on this cryptid. Now, let's move on to the Mongurayu misidentification. The origin of this cryptid comes from 1925, where world-famous explorer Lieutenant Colonel Percy Fawcett disappeared while exploring the Brazilian jungles. Before he disappeared, however, he noted his accounts of several creatures he encountered one of the most famous being a giant toothless shark in fresh water. It's said to attack and swallow men if given the chance. 
so I'm immediately calling Bull Shark on this one. I know, bad joke, sue me. There's only a handful of sharks that live in fresh water, and the few that do, sure as hell, don't have gums. Before I continue, remember the line of questions I asked about the cookie cutter shark and its ecological niche. Apply that line of questioning here. Many scientists believe what Fawcett actually saw was one of two fish, sturgeons and parabuzz. And I agree with this. Both groups live in Brazil. It can grow deceptively large. And certain species of the groups do have shapes and figures that can be mistaken for a shark or shark-like. Remember, this was back in the 1920s where we had next to nothing as far as shark data. So one could be forgiven for seeing a large species of catfish with a shark-like tail or feature and call it a shark, at least for that time frame. If for some reason there was some freshwater shark with gums, it would be vastly different from anything we've seen as far as sharks go. All right, now let's move on to the giant goblin shark. You know, goblin sharks in general get a bit of bad publicity, mainly for two reasons that kind of feed into one another. One, because they're found so deep, they're often called monsters for shock value, and because of reason two, which is that they're always shown like this, when in reality, they look like the goblin shark currently on the screen. Yes, you. Goblin sharks only look like this in the split second they try to bite their prey, just like any other shark, as their jaws are not attached to their skull. Anyway, for the giant goblin shark, this cryptid is actually 100% confirmed to be true. In fact, I don't think we can even call it a cryptid. It's just a goblin shark. Well, two of them actually. We used to think that goblin sharks only grew to about 12 feet long, give or take. That is until the year 2000, where a massive female was captured in the Gulf of Mexico at a depth of over 3,000 feet. While they didn't measure the shark, don't know why, scientists estimated that based on the photo, she was between 5.4 meters and 6.17 meters, or between 17 and 20 feet. That's a big jump from 12 feet. And this female was originally thought to just be an anomaly as far as goblin sharks went until another big female was caught in 2014. Again, they didn't measure the shark. Again, don't know why. But they did release it back into the wild. Based on the photos, scientists estimated that she was between 4.86 meters and 6.35 meters, or 16 to almost 21 feet long. Two females caught at different times in the same area, in the same size range. This isn't a cryptid, folks. This is nature showing us that goblin sharks get way bigger than we originally thought. And no, that doesn't make them a threat to humans. Goblin sharks have literally never killed a human. In fact, most goblin sharks have probably never seen a human. But yeah, this is a cryptid confirmation. This one exists. No other way to put it. Now, if we take another look at the shark cryptid iceberg, some of you may have noticed that I've skipped over quite a few of the entries. That's because a fair amount of them are more counts of megalodon sightings, or giant shark sightings, if you will. While I'm normally one to brush any meg stories aside, because there's so many, my next shark cryptid video is specifically going to be dedicated to all the giant shark entries. But for now, this is going to be where we end today's video. 
Thank you for once again giving me some of your time. Remember to get at least eight hours of sleep. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then.